For the spout construction, we first need to start by making some uh, cuts on our front and back pieces. Uh, these are the medium weight pieces. And so I'm going to take one of my pieces and I'm going to line it up so that the right side is even with a line on my mat. And I'm going to make a tick mark on the top that is three inches from the right side. Three inches. And then I'm going to line up the left side and make a mark that is one inch from the left side. So one inch over here, three inches over here. I'm going to connect these uh, tick marks to the corners and cut those pieces off. And I'll repeat that for my other front back piece. Now that I have those cuts made, I want to make one more cut, and that is along the top edge. I'm going to measure an inch and a half, and I'll just use my dots on my gridded mat. An inch and a half along the top from the left edge, and I'm going to connect that mark to this tick mark that's down here on this corner. And I'll draw this line just so you can see what's going on. So one and one half inches along this edge, join that tick mark to this one down here that was at the three inch, and we're going to cut this piece off. And I'll repeat that on the other side. Next I'm going to take a piece of scrap cardstock and trace this piece so we'll have a template for our pattern paper. Now that we've made both of those cuts, we can put this together. We'll take one of them and flip it over. And we'll take our outside piece and we're going to put that in the center of these. And then we have our inside piece that's going to get joined over here. And we'll do these with um, simple butt joins, right one up against each other. And just use some more of your joining strips. I'm going to uh, jo put joining strips on four edges, but I won't join it to make it 3D yet. I'll just leave it flat. Once I've made those joins, I'm going to flip this over and trim off any of the little excess pieces of joining strip. Next we need to add some ledger strips and on the bottom, which is the side with the very slanted edges, we're going to put two, one on each of these slanted edges. Now I'm just lining up the corner with one of my one inch lines on my mat because I want to mark a space that is one half of an inch back from this corner because we only want to run the ledger strip from that point to the corner down here. So I'll do that on the other side as well. Line this up with an inch mark and then make a line at a half inch. And then these are very steep points down here so I'll just cut my ledger strip and I'm just using black so you can see it better so that I can come into that point a little bit easier and then I'll just cut it even with that mark that I made. And I'll hold that back a sixteenth of an inch from the edge. And I'll do that same thing over here on this other side. Then I'll turn this around to work on the top. And on the top we'll put ledger strips on all four edges. The only thing we have to be careful of is because we have this joining strip that needs to come in over here. I'll just make a mark about a half inch in there so that I'll stop my ledger strip at this point. And you'll have to angle for the corners on some of these pieces as well. So I'll go ahead and put these four ledger strips in, again holding them back a sixteenth of an inch from the edge. Now I have all my ledger strips on and I burnish them with my bone folder. I'm ready to make this into a three-dimensional thing. 
And so I've removed the score tape backing from this strip over here. And when I put this together, I'm just going to have these corners kiss. The back, the inside edges should just touch. And I'll look at this top corner especially. So right now I've just attached this top corner up here where my thumb is. You can't, now I move my thumb a little bit out of the way. So I have a good corner right there. And now I'll come down and make the, this other corner uh, kiss. And then I can reach in from the inside and burnish that. It is a little bit hard to get a bone folder in to burnish this, so you can just reach in with your fingers and do that. When we put finishing strips on these edges, that will also reinforce that join. Next we can work on our top support and bottom support pieces. These are the pieces that will go into these two places. And we have to do a little cutting. They're going to stay two inches at their base, but they'll only be one inch at their top. So I'm just using my uh, craft mat and centering that top piece so I can mark one inch here. And then I'll connect these tick marks to the corners and cut off these angles like we've done before. And I'll repeat that for the uh, bottom support as well. Just mark an inch in the center. You can of course use your centering rule if you're more comfortable doing that. So we have a couple other prep steps to do, one for each of these pieces. I'll start with my bottom support. I'm going to line it up on my craft mat horizontally and I'll get it centered here. I'm just putting these top corners on one of my uh, quarter inch dots here and then I'll take my uh, ruler and I'm just going to cut off the top three-eighths of an inch the top three-eighths of an inch and then for the other piece I want to take my crop a dial and I'll use the bigger side I'm just going to punch a couple of holes next to each other in the center just to kind of make a little space there in the middle that we're going to take this in and out and that will help us get a hold of that piece. So now let's dry fit the top piece. It should fit right on those ledger strips that are there and just nestle nicely inside. And I'm going to take a couple pieces of low tack tape and put that on each side to hold that in place. So now that I have my uh, low tack tape in place, I can dry fit my bottom support. Now when this support goes in, it rests on those ledger strips. And it kind of comes up just a little bit from the bottom so that the edges will be flush here. You don't want to have this hang down at the bottom so that it comes over the top there. And you'll have a hole up here at the top that's planned. So it should be flush along these edges here. So you can kind of see where that's going to go in. And now we'll run some glue and put this bottom support piece in. Not the top. The top's just staying temporarily in. So I've run my glue along the tops of the ledger strips and then I put kind of about an eighth of an inch of glue down here at the bottom so that this edge will have something to rest on. And I'll go ahead and put that in just like we did the dry fit. Now I'm setting this on my craft mat and looking down to make sure that it is staying uh, nice and uh, symmetrical. I'm, you can use this kind of space right here as a a helper to help you judge that and we're going to want to let that dry. You can take a rubber band if you want to and put that around there to hold it in place while it dries. And if you do put a rubber band around here just put it back down on your craft mat and make sure that you've still got it nice and symmetrical and then let that thoroughly dry. 
Now that my bottom support is dry, I want to do one little touch to this piece that's right here, and I'll zoom in to show you what it is. So right here, this is the bottom support we just put in, and this is the inside. You can see how this inside, this corner here, is standing proud of this angle. So what I'm going to do is take my craft knife, and I have a brand new blade in here, and I'm just going to shave down and knock off that corner. So I take my blade and line it up with that edge, and just kind of do a back and forth sawing motion. Just take your time with a nice sharp blade. It's very easy to do that and you'll get a little sliver off of there and once you do that you see you have a nice nice continuation of this angle you can always take an emery board and give that a little um, action there as well but that'll make this really nice and it's really a easy thing to do as long as you have a very sharp brand new uh, craft knife blade Now that our construction is finished, we can start uh, the process to put decorative paper on. We'll start by putting finishing strips on all the vertical edges, the four vertical edges here, and just miter the corners back. And sometimes with all these angles, your miters might not be 45 degrees, but just do the best you can. And uh, when we go to put these on, what I like to do is take out what I call a little insurance by just coming in on these corners with my marker so that if my miters aren't perfect the the marker will hide anything that's not exactly right and it's only at the very corners you know that anything will show because the decorative paper uh, will come uh, and the finishing strips will come up the rest so just put your marker right at the corners and run the four vertical finishing strips and uh, hold off on doing the other ones for now Once you get the four verticals in, you can work on the bottom. Now when you do the long angled sides to the bottom, take your piece and bring it up right to this corner here, and then measure it. And I've got a piece that I've got ready to go here. And to come in around this hole, what you'll do is just kind of make a little snip along the edge of that hole so that you'll be able to wrap that piece to the inside. And then when you do this piece, you'll also wrap around to the inside. So go ahead and do the four pieces that go on the bottom. Now that we have the bottom completed, we can work on the top and we're going to take the top support out we don't need that for right now what we'll do here is put strips on but we will just attach them onto the spout itself leave that tab with its backing strip um, that you would normally attach to the top support just uh, hanging proud of the top there so just finish these edges and leave that top um, the top tabs open so now I have my top finishing strips on and you can see their little tabs are just hanging out here um, we just don't put the top support piece on until we we're going to attach a little piece that comes across from the watering can and we'll need to be able to reach in here to get at that piece. So that's why we haven't put that top piece on yet. So now we're ready for decorative paper and I just want to take some measurements and see how things are looking. Um, I like to have about a sixteenth of an inch reveal on either side of my of my uh, pa decorative paper to see the the blue. You can of course have whatever reveal you want. So just take a measurement of both rectangular sides. That's easy to do. 
Um, here I've got my two inch ruler on here and I think I want to have my strips cut about two and a sixteenth just to have uh, see that reveal and I'll probably come about nine and an eighth but you can just judge for yourself how much reveal you want to see and do the same thing over on this rectangular piece that is on sorry for the glare on this side now for the uh, slanted sides remember we made a uh, drew around one of our chipboard pieces to make a template which I've cut out here and I'll just take this piece on here and see how that looks if I'm getting the kind of reveal I want I think for me I need to take a little bit off the top here in order to get uh, the reveal I want and then take this and remember it's a mirror image on this side and do that same kind of thing and again I need to cut mine a little bit shorter at the top but you judge what kind of reveal you want to have now I'm going to use this decorative paper and remember so when you make your final templates for this one, you'll cut one with it facing this way and one with the facing the other way. You need to cut two uh, mirror image here or else you, you won't have the same color paper showing. And uh, this paper doesn't seem to have any kind of pattern to it, so I don't think it matters if you cut what order you cut your pieces out of. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my pieces and prep them and then I'll be back. So here are my pattern papers. I've inked the edges and I've prepped the backs with score tape. I put a little extra on the um, slanty sides because there might be some windows on there. And we have an attachment on to the narrow side. And I guess I'll just put some regular adhesive down the middle of this long outside piece. There's nothing structural that gets attached to it. So then I'll just go ahead and attach these pieces to my spout and burnish them down. And then here is the spout with the decorative paper on the sides. Next we'll make a little attachment piece to attach the spout to the can and I'm going to start out with one of my ledger strips here and cut two pieces that are one inch long. Two at one inch long. Now I have a little scrap of chipboard here and I'm going to cut a piece that is three eighths inch wide by one inch long. Three eighths inch wide by one inch long. Now I'm going to take the two pieces I cut from the ledger strip and stack them. Now I just have a little stack. And I'll take off the backing from this side. And I'll line up the 3 8 inch piece with one edge of that stack. Give that a good squeeze and then I'll take some quarter inch score tape and put it on the this is a the ledger strip here that's a quarter inch of quarter of an inch wide and I'll put some score tape on that so now I have this little unit it's two thicknesses of quarter inch wide and one thick thickness that's three eighths inch tall and I'll just test to make sure it fits inside of my opening here and it does so now I'll zoom back out and show you what we're going to do with this piece so on my watering can body on one of the narrower sides I'm going to measure three and a quarter inches down from the top three and a quarter and I want to make a little line 
that is one inch wide and it's centered in there. So I'll just extend this a little bit. And find the center here with my centering ruler. There's the ends. And so now I have a one inch long line that is centered on this panel that is three and a quarter inches in from the top. So now I'm going to remove the score tape backing from our little piece that we just made. The part that sticks up with the 3 eighths goes up. And I'm going to line up the top of the quarter inch side here with that line. Before you push it down hard you can just take your ruler and make sure it's all sitting nice and square there and once you're happy with it go ahead and push it down firmly and what that does it gives us a little lip there that we can rest the spout on and kind of stick that spout down. We'll also glue it but that just gives it a little more stability there We're not going to attach the spout yet though. Now we'll work on the piece I call the bridge. It's just a little piece of lightweight chipboard that spans in between the spout and the can. And I just have this uh, spout on here temporarily. Now under the lightweight chipboard under the spout section there's a piece of chipboard that's three quarters by three and one eighth and I'm just going to take my marker and go along the edges and just a little bit inside in case when I cover it with my uh, cardstock I don't get an accurate job. And I did that on both the top and the bottom. Next I've got my little scoreboard out here and I'm going to score this at 5 eighths of an inch from one end, 5 eighths from one end, then I'm going to flip it over and turn it so the other end is at the left and score it at 5 eighths over there. Next I'm going to bend this so it's like in a Z formation. In the cardstock uh, cutting guide, it calls for a piece of our colored cardstock that is three quarters of an inch wide by seven inches long. And I'm going to start out by scoring that at five eighths of an inch on the left end. Just fold that up. And when I put this cardstock on, I want to do it in that kind of a Z formation, and that way we'll get a nice coverage here. So I'm just going to start by undoing the backing strip from this first end and lining up it up nicely, and then I'll continue along keeping this bent. I'll, keep, I'll continue along here and then I'm just going to bend it around that last area and then I'll cut that off even with the chipboard and then I'll repeat that process for the other side again I'll just give myself a little starting score at 5 eighths of an inch and then 
wrap it around the other side. And then I'll take this piece just to the edge of my table so that I can give a good burnish on all of the sides. Next I'll take my scissors and just kind of cut off the corners, come down about an eighth of an inch and just make a, a 45 degree cut right across that corner. And a matching one on the other side and do the same thing at this end. And then take your marker and color where that raw chipboard is now. Next I've cut a strip of decorative paper and this is just 5 eighths of an inch wide. And I cut it about 7 and 3 quarters long so I can get both sides out of it. And this is just the reverse side of this uh, paper I used for the can. And here, I'll start out by cutting the corners on one end. I'm just inking this, of course, with my vintage photo. And I prepped this with some score tape. And then I'll just put this on, leaving a little reveal at the end, folding it around until I get along this part, this uh, flat part here. Now I still have my score tape backing here and I can bend it around this corner and then determine how long to cut it and then cut the little corners, ink them and then stick that down. And then I'll just repeat that process on the other side. So now we need to uh, drill some holes with our awl for brads because we're going to use brads to attach this to both the spout and the watering can. And I'm going to hold it up in this position, so I'll, I'll make my holes from the inside here. And I'm going to come about halfway, halfway in between the fold and the end. And just I'm just using these little long Tim Holtz brads. So I'll come in, oh, just a little bit, uh, you know, just so I can get them nicely spaced there. You just leave room for the brad heads. Don't come too close to the edge or too close to the center. And just start your hole and then work it, work it back and forth here. I do kind of wiggle my awl around in here. I like to use the awl so that the brads fit nice and tightly and in lieu of like using a crocodile or something like that. Those are just too big a holes for these little brads here. And then I'm going to repeat that same process on this end. So this piece is going to attach in this fashion to the watering can. It goes right underneath the band and it gets centered. So just use your ruler to make sure that you're getting it centered. And then hold it in place. Watch out where you're putting your fingers inside. And just use your awl through the holes that we already made to make holes into the watering can. And then take two of your little brads and put them through you don't need to open the brad legs on the inside because this is just a temporary fit at this point. So now that I've got the bridge attached to the can temporarily, I'll put my spout on that little support piece and stand it up and get it centered down here at the bottom. And I put that piece of low tack on my jeans a couple times so it's extra low tack. Now I'll keep an eye on this join here on the from the spout to the can and then bring this down into the position. And I'm just going to take my awl into one of those places and just lightly go. And then I'll take the spout off, take that tape off down here, and then go ahead and drill that hole all the way through. Once I have that hole drilled, I'll go ahead and put this back on. I'll 
put one of my little brads in that hole that I just made. And then I'll take my awl and lightly mark where that other hole is going to go. You don't want to try to drill through when it's in this position. You'll put too much stress on the join over here. So just take that off again and drill that hole through. Once you've made both holes, you can go ahead and put this on one last time. Get it centered. And go ahead and put both brads into the spout. Now once we have both brads into the spout here, we can take this tape off the bottom and carefully remove the spout down here and we can release the bridge from the watering can and then we can make sure that these brads are all the way seated in there and then reach down in there and open up the brad legs to secure this to the spout. Once I've got those brad legs secured I just have a little scrap of cardstock with some score tape on the back of it that I'm going to reach in and put on the back of those brad legs. And now that we've completed that we can add our top support piece. I'm just going to run a bead of glue along the tops of those ledger strips, remove the backing on these tabs and secure it in place. And that's all we're going to do to the spout for now because it'll be much easier to work on to add any windows or anything that we might want to add to it if it's not attached to the watering can.